And we really haven't talked about the guy that finished second here, Beruhu Aragawe. And I think this was just terrible news for Grant Fisher and all Grant Fisher fans because going into Worlds last year, everyone's Fisher setting all these American records. He's doing so well. You know, people are thinking, oh, he's got a medal. And I'm like, no, he doesn't. Do you guys realize how many good guys there are now? There's so many good runners. Now, I mean, we had six guys, that we, two from Uganda, two from Canada, two from me, that we were debating who was going to win this race. But I was like, Fisher's gotten better, but Aragawa is younger than him and has also gotten better. Fisher was fifth in the Olympic 10,000, Aragawa was fourth. And then last year at the Prefontaine Classic, remember, this is the guy that ran 1250 and just destroyed the field by like, just gapped the field early on and just beat everybody like 10 seconds. And then he goes to Worlds and doesn't do well in the 10K, 2731. Yes, Fisher beat him there. But then the Ethiopians sort of panic and kick him off the 5,000 team. Why? Because they're going to put Borrego, who's the Olympic champion of the 10, on the team. And he doesn't, so he doesn't get a chance to medal there. So he's never medaled, but he's super, super good. And I just think Fisher's amazing. I hope he ends up being regarded as a better runner than Galen Rupp. Because there's so many questions about Rupp with his association with Salazar. But if I'm if I'm a betting agency and I put the over under for total global medals for Grant Fisher at 0.5, I think I'm going to bet and put even odds. I'm going to take the negative and say he never medals at a world championship. And at the beginning of the show, I asked, was he one of the biggest losers of the week? Like, I wish he was at World Cross. He didn't go, but I'm not going to ding him too much. Why? Because he was he went to. France and ran one of the greatest indoor 3000s in history. Well, I mentioned Gurma set the world record. And I was so excited that an American had a legitimate shot to win this race. I think 30% of the people in Let's Run thought he was going to win this race. And around 30% of the people thought the world record was going to go down. So an American had about a 10% chance, if you multiply those two together, to set the world record in France. So he's incredibly good. I just think there's so many other guys that are really good it's going to be tough. Now, maybe there's enough worlds. Sometimes these guys move to the road. Sometimes they don't double back. Maybe he can sneak a bronze in there. What do you think? I would take the over because we do have a bunch of championships coming up. He was very close in both races in 2022, Robert. He was fourth in the 10K and he would have medaled, I think, in the 5K if he hadn't chopped up his steps. So I still think he gets at least one. But like you said, it's really, really tough. And the good thing is he did. he runs the 5 and the 10. He's probably going to be on the team every time if he's healthy, but it is very difficult. This is a very competitive era of distance running. Part of the problem with Grant's the events he's in. The 5 and the 10, there's very little tactics. You pretty much need to be one of the top three fittest guys in that day. You know, If you're in the 15, there's a lot more randomness. You think there's more randomness? Not with the way the 15s run this, these days. With the 15, you got to be one. Of, you got to be able to run 328. With the shoes, it seems like a lot of guys sure, sure can do it. Uh, no, that's not true. You still got to be really, really fit. The 1500 has become less and less random. All right. No, no, we'll no, no. no. Well, well, Weldon's were totally right about this. The 1500 has tactics, and the guys get hurt a lot in the 1500. Like they're doing speed work, they pull a hamstring. Like Philip Ingrich and get some. The guy that getting a, you know. Getting the bronze is a different guy every year. Every year, that's the same well, thing in the five and ten. I mean, I guess Kip Lebo got two straight. John, you're the track historian. Ten. Yeah. Other than Galen Rupp, when's the last time an American-born athlete medaled in the five or ten thousand meters out of Worlds or Olympics? Men. Correct. I'm guessing it was 1964 with. Billy Mills, Bob Schill, and Bill Dellinger. I'm just saying that's what Fisher, Fisher's, and it's probably harder now because there's more Africans. It's just he's going up against just a stacked deck. Fisher wasn't like, even born in America either. So, oh, well, there you got my point, John. Yep. So, hey, maybe he, maybe actually that means he can medal because he was born in Canada. But the only person to do it in what 60 years is a guy whose coach has been banned for life. But I know those who think that everyone's doping are like, but Fisher trains with his right-hand man. 
Jerry Schumacher. Jerry Schumacher is not and never has been Alberto Salazar's right hand man. Anyway, that's right. false, John. That is false. That is no. Well, he was hired to be. False. He wasn't his right hand man. He was basically hired to be an assistant and. Sorry, he was hired to be his successor, but the group splintered quickly. I mean, me, all right, maybe it was for a year or something. I, I don't know if it, I don't know if you'd ever describe that as their relationship. Well, but if they hire someone to come in to be the assistant, I think you're the right hand man at that point. It quickly well, the fractured. successor. I don't know if he was the assistant. I think he was more the successor, right? Because when we when we get to USATF indoors, the big controversy before was in 2014. And I'd forgotten that Alberto and Jerry had to be physically separated from each other. These are two Nike coaches. That was nine years ago. That's crazy. All right, let's put a bow on here on World Cross Country. First, a couple shout outs. One, Sam Chalanga, 21st place, top American. For the second time in his career, 